guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about a wholesome crime case. Now I know that sounds bizarre. <laughs> no, no, no. But hear me out. It's actually kind of good news and I wanted to talk about it specifically today because it's the 31st. I'm a literal dumbass. I actually thought tomorrow was the 31st, but tomorrow's the 30th, so congratulations, you're an idiot. I'm sorry about the bad quality. I had originally pre-filmed a video for today, but I kept thinking about it and I kept liking it less and less, so I figured I'd rather have a video that's not as good quality as usual, because obviously I don't have my lights with me because I'm out of town, but something that I can really stand by. McDonald's employees coordinate women's rescue after she mouths help me in drive through line on Christmas Eve. The unnamed woman said the man she was traveling with, Eduardo Valenzuel, had threatened her life and authorities later found a loaded gun in his trunk. Employees at California McDonald's helped a woman find safety after she deftly asked for help while going through the drive-thru. Around 2 p.m. on Christmas Eve, an unnamed woman entered a McDonald's in Lodi, California and told an employee at the counter to call 911, according to a statement from the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office. She also gave the employee the license plate number of the car she was in and asked if they would hide her. The woman then went to use the restroom and once she returned to the counter to order, a man later identified as suspect Eduardo Valenzuela. Is it Valenzuela or Valenzuela? Because they spelled it differently. Okay. Stopped her and instructed her to order in the drive-thru, read the statement. On the drive-thru line, the woman managed to ask for help again, this time by mouthing the words, help me to an employee at the window, authorities said. So I'm gonna just pause here and say, I'm so glad that this woman found a way to let other people know. Granted, of course, the drive-thru isn't perfect, but there's no perfect way to ask for help when you're with someone who makes you feel like you're in danger. So I'm just glad that she found someone she could tell so then they could help her out. And I really think like they did a great job as we'll see in a second. While in the drive through line, the woman managed to ask for help again, this time by mouthing the words, help me to an employee at the window, authorities said. To give law enforcement enough time to reach the scene, McDonald's employees purposefully stalled the line, Sacramento NBC affiliate KCRA reported. They informed everyone else down the drive through line and we held up actually two cars in front of that car. By holding those two cars up, it allowed us then to handle that situation allow law enforcement to get here in a timely manner, Golden State Restaurant Group marketing manager Regina Camera told the outlet. Sheriff's Office deputies soon arrived at the restaurant and employees quickly directed them toward the woman who needed help, according to the statement. Authorities spoke with a woman who was quote unquote shaken and said that Valenzuela had been violent with her in the past. That day, he allegedly told her to take him to visit his family and threatened her life with a firearm. Deputies found a gun in the trunk of the vehicle, which had been reported stolen in a different state, read the statement. The firearm was loaded and it was a revolver, and San Joaquin County Sheriff's Department Deputy Andrea Lopez, according to Sacramento ABC affiliate KXTV. The deputies did run Mr. Valenzuela, they keep changing his last name, I'm so annoyed, and he was found to be a felon, so he is a prohibited person. He's not allowed to possess or own any firearms or any ammunition. Valenzuela was booked at the San Joaquin County jail for charges that included criminal threats, possession of stolen property, and possession of a firearm while being a felon, said authorities. In Thursday's statement, the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office applauded the restaurant for providing a safe place for abuse and human trafficking victims. Camera told Fox affiliate KTXL, the employees were able to successfully aid the woman because they are trained on how to handle crisis situations like that. The woman involved in Tuesday's incident could have been seriously hurt or lost her life, said San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office Deputy Andrea Lopez, according to KCRA. There's no telling what would have happened, she said. We don't know if they could have made it to their family's house in Atwater. The victim could have possibly been abused or even killed. Valenzuela's bail has been set to $360,000. So one thing I really want to say is that I'm so happy that these employees got that training. I think that training is genuinely, I've never worked at a place that has training like this, but I definitely think anyone would benefit from it in whatever line of work you're in, you know, crises happen at inconvenient times or times when you don't expect it. So I definitely feel like everyone should be trained with that just so you know how to react because I was even telling my friends that I definitely wouldn't have thought to try and hold up the car with cars in front. And obviously I haven't had the training, but I'm so glad that they thought of what to do and found a smart way to do it that wouldn't like anger necessarily the abuser um, or make him pop off. I think by doing something that's 
relatively subtle, it was a good thing. So I'm just glad that she's okay and that the situation was handled. So in another article from ABC10, there's a quote that says, a guest came in and she notified her employees that there was some sort of emergency and was in a stressful situation, explained Regina Camera, marketing manager for the franchise owner. We encouraged her to use the restroom. So as for Eduardo Valenzuela, I guess it is, I looked and I couldn't find any other information about him. Also because there are other Eduardo Valenzuela, so I don't want to confuse anyone, but he was a felon, so obviously he has done something else of illegal. But anyway, I wanted to start the new year with, I guess, a more upbeat story, of course, ideally. She would have never been in this situation to begin with, but I was really impressed with how the employees dealt with it. And like I said, I really do think that crisis management should be taught to everyone, because even for myself, back when I was teaching, if a student told me about something that was going on, whether it be abuse or something else, I don't know if I would feel as equipped as possible to deal with that. If you guys have any tips or links on crisis management, I guess, for just like the average person, not necessarily an employee at place X or Y, please drop that down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a happy new year. Feel free to leave your resolutions down below if you feel like it, and I'll catch you guys next time.